With this section complete, now we can actually go on to remove and replace the vano seals. So the vano seals are behind this. So here's the intake side, that's the exhaust side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these covers. There are three five millimeter hex screws. Just go ahead and clean the cover so that way you don't get any dirt inside. There's the cover removed. Let's go ahead and clean it up. To remove the piston, you actually have to push it from the inside, right here. Push the piston, and you should be able to pop it out. Just like that. Now to replace the seal, the outer part is a, like a Teflon ring, so you're gonna cut it. You get like an exacto knife or something, and just cut a little cross section. You see there's also an o-ring on the inside. I was able to get both of them out in one shot. There we go. Clean the inside of this section. Now here's the seals that the Baseon Systems people provided us with. There should be two that have the Teflon ring on the outside with the O-ring on the inside that are the same size. So these are for the piston. So we're just going to take one of these, get the O-ring off, put the O-ring on first. And make sure the O-ring is right in the center Now we can take the Teflon seal and we're going to stretch it over the top. The thing with the Teflon seal, it will deform a little bit when you're stretching it. Alright, so in order to get the Teflon seal to go back to the proper size, we're, going to, we're just going to insert it back into the cylinder and just let it sit in there for a little bit. Let's get some oil on it. And you want to insert it in. So let it sit in there for a minute or so, and we'll pull it back out. All right, so once you've had it sit in there for a minute, go ahead and pull it out and make sure that the Teflon seal is back to its original size and it's not deformed anywhere. And then you can try reinserting it one more time and just try to get it in a little bit further and just make sure it's going in and out properly. There we go. Now put this to the side and now we're going to have to remove the seal that's on the inside. Now there's a seal that's on the inside of the cylinder, um, same way as that piston had a seal, but this one's a little bit opposite. So the Teflon seal um, is like, Teflon seal's still on the outside and there's another O-ring on the inside, but as you can see there's a hole, so it sits in a different way. So you're going to have to do is get a 90 degree pick, and you're going to have to just sit there and just get like cut a little hole 
into that Teflon seal and then pull it out. So cut a little cross section into it. And then you can pull it out. Just like that. And do the same thing to the O-ring on the inside. Now here are the seals that we're going to use. We're going to use the o-ring that's on the outside of the Teflon seal, so the o-ring is bigger. Now to get the o-ring in, it's going to be a little bit tricky. What you have to do is you have to make sure it's not twisted. So you have to get it in like just straight. So you can use a needle nose plier or something to help you to do this. Let me go grab it. So you see how it's twisting? You don't want it to twist. There we go. With the o-ring in there, now we're going to put the Teflon seal. You see how, how, how I have it shaped? That way we can slide it right in and then we'll use the pick to straighten it out. Now with the Teflon seal all the way pushed in as well, we're going to put the piston back in and see if we can just get it to, you know, compress that to the normal size. Now we're just going to keep it in there for about a minute or so so it resizes it. In the meantime, we can change the O-ring on the cap. So use your pick. Clean up the cap. Here's the other O-ring. And that's ready to go. It's been about a minute since we put the piston in there. Let's go ahead and pull it straight out. Now I've got the piston out, just double check, make sure that Teflon seal is still sitting in there properly and that there's, you can see right through it without any imperfections. We'll try reinserting it one more time. Alright, so once that o-ring is resized properly, let's go ahead and put the piston back in. Just go ahead and lubricate it lightly. And the small end goes in first, like this. And you have this end. Just push it in. You should be able to see it come out this side. And 
Now make sure there's no dirt or debris anywhere on the cylinder or around it. Go ahead and uh, put some oil on the o-ring that we put on for the cap. And then we can put the cap on. Now we're going to repeat the same process for the exhaust side. The process is going to be very similar to the intake side. So first we'll push the piston out. All right, so for the exhaust side, it is a little bit different as far as the piston goes. So the piston has two seals. So there's no seals on the inside that we have to change. They're just both on the piston. So this side should be a little bit easier, but it's practically the same thing still to change the seal. So go ahead and do that. Um, only, only difference that we're gonna have is to compress this seal. You can use like a hose clamp or something. So to get a hose clamp and tighten around it, and that way it'll bring it back to its original size. But besides that, still cut them out, get the new seals on, and then we'll resize them. All right, so to compress the top part of this piston, you can just put it back into the cylinder from the back, put some oil on it, put it in, let it sit in there for a minute. But to get this small one, since you had to stretch the Teflon seal all the way over this to get it in there, it's gonna be uh, you know pushed out a lot more. So we're gonna use this hose clamp. It's got it nice and tight on there. Just leave it on there for about a minute or so. So once you have the Teflon seals resized, just go ahead and put a little bit of oil on them. Make sure all the surfaces are clean of lint and debris. Just gonna put this in. It should go straight in. Push it in, push it all the way through. And you should see it come out the other side. And now make sure you have the cap with the new o-ring on it. Get a little bit of oil on there. All right, so now we're gonna pull out this middle section. This is the oil flow regulator. And we're gonna pull this out to change the o-rings on both sides. There we go, clean it up. Book those on there, make sure everything's nice and clean. All right, that's the end of all of the Vano seals. Now make sure you go ahead and take care of all your Vano solenoid pack, um, clean out all of the stuff, change all the O-rings on the ceiling plate, whatnot. Just get all that good to go. Um, and now we're gonna move on to doing the rattle kit. So this, alongside the rattle kit, we are also gonna be changing all of the sprocket bolts. Um, and we're going to be upgrading them to the latest, uh, the new revision, which are a little bit stronger. And we'll show you guys why. So I know I had showed earlier, I was checking for the top dead center, and I was using the whole timing kit and stuff. So if you're only doing the Vano seals, you really don't need all that timing stuff because you're not really going to mess with any of the timing related components. So that's pretty much it for the whole Vano seals, and you would literally just put the whole assembly back together. 
But since we are doing uh, the vandals rattle repair as well as changing all the sprocket bolts on this particular car, we are gonna have to have those timing tools. And that's why I had mentioned it earlier. So I highly recommend doing all of those sprocket bolts if they haven't been done before, mainly because you know they do back out and once they start backing out, they actually end up shearing. And when they shear, then you're gonna start hearing like a rattling noise, like almost like marbles in your engine pretty much. And I'll just be all those bolts just you know flying around in there. Sometimes the bolts can get out and if they do get out and you know go onto the timing chain or something, they can ruin a lot of stuff. So that's why I highly recommend doing the whole sprocket bolts as well and just put the upgraded bolts and make sure you lock tie them and do all that. But anyways, I think we're gonna end this video here as far as whole vandal seals go. Uh, we're gonna have the next video that takes care of the rattle and also putting everything else back together. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next video.